Now, the Democratic Alliance says that uh, the party is set to charge uh, Cape Town Mayor Patricia DeLille for her attendance for the EFF memorial service to honor Winnie Madigizela Mandela, saying reports uh, that they will charge her are simply not true. It's understood that DeLille's attendance at the event in Brantford in the Free State came as a surprise as the party was not informed. She, of course, was not the only DA member at the memorial. The Free State chairperson, Patricia Kopane, was also in attendance. However, due to DeLille's disciplinary hearing uh, over accusations of, ma- of maladministration, uh, we're wondering, could this aggravate a- an already tense relationship? Joining us uh, from Cape Town is political analyst Sanusha Naidu. Sanusha, good evening to to you. Uh, I mean, the relationship with uh, the DA and Patricia DeLille seems to have reached uh, uh, very close to its end now. Uh, good evening to you and your and your listeners. I think you're right, Bongani. I think the relationship between the two has reached a point where it's almost irreconcilable dif- differences. So whether or not there's a there's a sense of getting out of this impasse. It's going to be difficult. And what we saw at the invitation of the EFF to attend the uh, Brantford Memorial Service for Winnie Marie Gazella Mandela, I think is just an, an indication of how far the irrepa- rep- irreparable damages have become. Of course, uh, one of the things that uh, are sure to come up uh, is uh, the, the veiled reference to what she's been undergoing when she uh, told the audience in Brantford uh, that she'd spoken to uh, the later Winnie Matikizela Mandela about her recent troubles, uh, saying that uh, those boys didn't know what they were dealing with, but saying that she'd assured her that she had it all under control. That's sure to uh, rub DA leaders the wrong way? Definitely. I think the idea is that this is a woman that went to pay her respects to an old friend that basically crafted their anti-apartheid struggle credentials together. So obviously what you have is a situation where you, on the one hand, you have the EFF who has raised certain specters around whether or not Mama uh, Winnie has been given the kinds of legitimacy, the recognition, and so forth in terms of her struggle and her credentials. And then, of course, you have Patricia DeLille, who essentially is one of those stalwarts of the, of the anti-apartheid struggle with, during her time with the, with the PAC, which essentially has now crafted this incre- the very close friendship with, with Winnie. So, in a sense, what you get here is one stalwart paying respect to another, and of course, the whole political landscape starts to implode because this has implications for Patricia DeLille's future as a political uh, activist, as a political icon. Does she stay in the party? Does she not stay in the party? The DA is want, wanting her to give reasons um, and whether or not it was something that she she could have said, uh, informed the DA of and say, I'm going to this memorial, but then again, she is a she is a, a, a an individual of her own voice, and the question is, should she have done that? And now the DA is asking her to give reasons. So it's becoming a massive political dilemma in terms of its implosiveness that it, that is going to emerge out of this whole process. But it becomes a dilemma for both the DA and for Patricia DeLille herself, because as you rightly point out, uh, she has her own particular credentials as a political operator before being a part of the DA. But many of the people who would support her are quite closely aligned to the values of the DA, even though they may like her as a champion of those. Uh, If she were to, for example, be drawn towards the EFF, almost, uh, you know, to to, to back to her roots in a way, uh, in terms of her past with the PAC, that does not necessarily mean she takes her voters with her. Um, I'm not so sure, Bongani. I think that when you actually start to unpack her her presence, her footprint, and her popularity at the grass level, I think there's a, never, there's a level at which people in the electorate still see her as anti-pat. 
And that was one of the ways in which she was welcomed to the memorial yesterday by the EFF leadership. But in the, on the ground, at the grassroots, I think there's, there's, it's much deeper than just about whether or not she's a political figure who is shrouded in controversy, and therefore will she be able to take her political constituency with her wherever she goes. I think there's a number of different ways you need to interpret this. One of it being is that this is almost a sense that a woman is being vilified in the DA. And what does this mean for, for, for gender politics of the party? The second thing is, you know, there are other members in the party who we haven't really found or, or the party hasn't found evidence against. But then here's a strong voiced individual, a critique and uh, a very, very firebrand personality who is essentially now brought to, to, to account and wrapped over the knuckles and pulled over the coals to say you brought the party into disrepute. When she was building the party, expanding the party base, etc., that was okay. But suddenly now you have this. So I think in the, in the minds of the electorate, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to say, uh, not so much about whether are we going to join uh, Patricia DeLille in whichever co in, uh, constituency or in, in any way of she, do, she, she, may, she expands her political office and her, her, her career, but it does raise a red flag for the DA in terms of how that impacts on building their support and electoral base. It's certainly one that uh, we're all going to be watching with keen interest in the coming weeks and months, uh, the relationship with, uh, uh, between Patricia DeLille, the Cape Town mayor, and the party, the Democratic Alliance. We'll see how it all unfolds. Stay with us. We've got more after this break.